Yeah. You know, I'm, an, I'm an Indigenous Australian. I'm a Gummeroy man, and uh, the landscape and the country is everything for us. And every time I write a story, the first thing I do is find the location and the land. And for me, the power of place is very important. And everything rises from that. I really believe um, we are products of our environment. And in Limbo, all of the characters in some way, they're all stuck in this limbo and this land is the stage. It's a very personal thing. Uh, uh, some of the shots in the film, actually, it's just me. I, I put the, set the camera up and I get into his car and I drive it. And, mm -hmm. and you can see, if you could see, and, and, I, and I have to run because the camera is sitting there all by itself, you know, and um, so it's a very, sometimes it's just me and the camera and, and the landscape, so I get very connected to it. And um, it's something that I think is in all my work and will continue. I'm a lover of cinema, but I've only seen a very small amount of films. And um, uh, the classic American Western is something I haven't really gone into um, much at all. I've watched a lot of Westerns. I've lost, watched a lot of films. Um, Character-wise for me, none of, none, of, none of those things are really sort of references. I, I think maybe over time and the experience of watching films, reading books, uh, meeting people, living, all of those things become sort of uh, organic references in some way to some aspect of any kind of character. Um, obviously, what I've been saying about the landscape itself we, we kind of, there was a fair bit of time from when Ivan sent me, first sent me the script to when we started shooting and there was evolution that happened through that process. Um, but then there was a point where Ivan sent me a bunch of uh, photographs of the landscape, which were pretty much frames from the film before we shot the film, uh, we, we, which starts to, you know, you, you, as an actor, you, you kind of relax because, you know, uh, this guy knows what he's doing as an actor when you feel safe and that you feel that you're in, you're in very capable hands, the organic evolution of that is exciting. And that was kind of fun. Like we were kind of near the end right before we were shooting. We were like, fuck, this, is, this, looks, this feels good. Here, this bit, that bit, and it just develops and that's exciting. For, for me, I've, I felt like all the characters in the film were living in some kind of memory and I wanted the, the film to have that kind of feeling that you are watching something now, but it also f felt like it could have been in the past. As And so many of the elements of the film deal with the past. And so I wanted this nostalgic kind of memory feeling. Um, so initially I was going to, I was trying to shoot the film 35 millimeter at least, and, and shoot it in color. And, um, but basically film is now extinct in Australia and it was just too difficult and so, I'm not a fan of colour in digital cameras. I think there's still a long way to go in how they reproduce the human face in a way that we can feel them the same way we feel them when we see them on film. And, and um, so my next um, decision was to, OK, if I can't do that, I'll go black and white digital. And that will hopefully give me that sense of memory within the frame. I'm not a fan of modern cinema. I, I, I'd like to push my new work back towards the 60s and the 70s, where I think, um, I think where cinema had something more pure than now. Uh, I, I am a fan of films from, from the old films, uh, and I like, I like cinema in the sense that you, you know, tr cinema for, for, for an actor has this potential you, to be able to portray a character without any words because it's, it's imagery, it's, it's sound and pictures uh, and the context of that. And then when you work with a, a director that you know understands that inherent, inherently and makes these choices, so the choice for Ivan to shoot it in black and white, to me, I just got excited because I know that that, that, sh that enhances the drama that exists and takes place on screen. There's an aspect of your brain that's taken up when you're looking at colour. When it's black and white, you look at more detail. That's why a lot of people find black and white photographs more interesting because they're looking for something. There's a reason in there that they're looking for. A lot of the film is about the unresolved issues facing Indigenous Australians when it comes to victims, being victims of crime in Australia. So the justice system has responded very poorly when they are forced 
to actually help Indigenous people because a lot of the time they're going out of their way to actually do the opposite. So, so mm. instead of arresting someone, they're actually ha they have to actually sit down and help them. And this is a big turnaround for them. And <laughs> they're just like, eh? I'm not used to that, you know. And, mm. and the, um, this story is a manifestation of many tr true life incidents. The un unresolved aspect of of the indigenous experience is true, and so I wasn't going to try and do something else. And um, I'm not looking for resolution in films anyway. When I'm watching films, I'm I'm looking for some something a sense of truth, and I'm and I'm not always looking for you know some final happy ending or any kind of you know ending that says it, now it's finished because in real life nothing ever stops you know our women back in australia are very strong they've been through a lot um historically and even with you know the politics in our country and the way we're treated by police um they've had to learn new ways how to survive and look after their families and have their backs um so i just played the role that a lot of my family members play in my family. Um, I just took strength from all the women that I know that have been in those situations. And a lot of my family, um, unfortunately, have been murdered back in Australia and a lot of their cases have not been heard yet. So I, I just played the role of the people who go through the experience because we're going through that every day back home. When I started my acting journey, um I, it, there weren't the stories really that I wanted to tell or thought that I wanted to tell. But in fact, it's turned out to be quite the opposite. The stories that I'm interested in and I'm really passionate about obviously reflect my own life experience. Um, and there's such a wealth of stories there. Um, mm. I live in the Northern Territory in Australia and films are starting to be made there slowly, but there's so many stories. So mm. I think that's a, that's a really positive uh, step in the right direction. Yeah, we're, we're you know, our, our culture and our people are the oldest storytellers on the planet. We've been telling stories for hundreds of thousands of years. So it's only right that we use technology and everything that we have now to continue that and get stories out that collaborate with non-Indigenous Australians as well. I mean, that's making change and heading towards a better future for the industry and for our mob as well. Right. Thank you.